Now, before I came up here, uh, and I knew I've been coming up here for a while because I've come up here to address the annual conference of the Presbyterian Church. The Chosen Frozen, I called them at the conference. Uh, some of them laughed, some of them didn't. <laughs> Uh, but it was good. It was good. They, they liked what I had to say, and they're not going to have me come back. In fact, there's a group getting together in Toowoomba to have me come up there to a lot of churches. Same thing in Rockhampton, uh, all working through the Presbyterian Church, because all the pastors got to hear me and what we're doing. But before I came up here, I, I gathered together just a few newspaper clippings from uh, some of the local papers as well as the national paper. In, in the Australian, Julia Gillard is cutting $10 million out of the Internet filtering scheme. She's taken $10 million out of the internet, thereby closing it. It's closed, thanks to Julia Gillard. And she took $10.5 million in the budget and puts it into a scheme to lobby for Kevin Rudd to get a temporary seat on the UN Security Council. So we can kind of see where her priorities are. Forget about the children. Let's see about international prestige and getting in a temporary seat, mind you. And here's from the Australian, the weekend Australian, uh, a South Australian member of parliament was suspended from the Labor Party. Now, you got to do something bad to get suspended from the Labor Party. But he was charged with child pornography offenses last month. This is a member of parliament uh, from, the, from South Australia. Here on the Gold Coast, the police smash a child pornography ring, uh, rescue 29 children. In fact, this child pornography ring was one of, if not the largest in the world, right here on the Gold Coast. Child pornography ring. Our children are crying out for help. Here's freedom in court for a man who raped his sister. Now, this is a horrible situation. The justice in the case said the man started a sexual relationship with his little sister when she was about to attend kindergarten. She was, and he was 12 years old. It stopped when the girl was seven. Uh, he was exposed to pornography at a young age. This activity that he engaged in his little sister is learned behavior. And they don't learn it from Mickey Mouse comic books. They learn it from pornography. We need to try to do something to stop the pornography from being so prevalent in our society. Here's a, the Rosny Children's Choir, world-renowned. Here's a man who played a pornographic video for a 14-year-old girl before engaging in indecent acts with her. He was just put in prison for that. This is in Tasmania. These are all current, recent newspaper articles. Here's one from the Sun Herald. I'm sorry, the Herald Sun. Uh, this is, despite evidence, the woman had twice rejected his advances. A judge threw out a rape case. A woman had twice rejected the man's advances. He went to sleep and he raped her, and the judge said, no, you didn't really rape her. Now, what is that judge into that he doesn't consider that to be rape? Remember, she had refused him twice, but she went to sleep and he raped her, and the judge threw the case out of court, didn't charge him with rape. Um, that's not good, some of the things that are going on. Who, who says that that judge is not addicted to pornography? Now, here's a, a children's author who had sex with children at his home. This is in the Australian June 7, just last month. And here's another one from the Herald Sun, violent sexual assaults increases. The rise in reported sex crimes, particularly against girls aged 14 and under, has been branded as unacceptably high. Unacceptably high. I guess there is a level where it's okay, but now it's unacceptably high. And more than a quarter of them remain unsolved. These are just recent current Examples of why we need to get, invite, get involved in this winnable war. Dr. Judith Reisman, who's a close friend of mine, one of the top authorities in the world on this, on, in this area, I talked to her during the Northern Territory um, intervention that the Howard government pulled together. And she was talking about pornography. She says pornography is the match to light an indigenous holocaust. I printed her email to me here. She says the only new major toxin to enter the Aboriginal population is that of pornography. And it's not their pornography, it's white man's pornography. They're showing it to their children. And their children are being abused and molested and assaulted and tortured and raped. And somebody needs to speak up. I'll speak up. Toss in pornography, Dr. Reisman says, and every female or young boy becomes a walking target 
for the most vile abuse within that culture. Now, some people say, well, you know, who is Dr. Reisman? Well, Dr. Reisman, when I had her here, I've had her here a couple of times in Australia to, with, with very, very good results. The Age had an, had an article with her in picture about children are sex victims, says expert. Dr. Reisman is one of the top experts in the world. And in fact, the, the, the producer of 60 Minutes phoned me and said, you have Judith Reisman in Australia? What's she doing in Australia? The Canberra Times, U.S. advocate, attacks the local porn industry. When Judith was in Canberra, this is the Canberra Times, when Judith was in Canberra, she addressed a national press club. And they were so impressed with her that they have her picture on the wall of speakers that really made an impact at the National Press Club. She was one. The Canberra Times also talk about Dr. Reisman's work against the Kinsey Institute. This is what the Canberra Times says. Kinsey's methods represent the rape of children. You ever heard of Dr. Alfred Kinsey? The Kinsey Institute, sexual behavior in the human male? Dr. Reisman is the one that is exposing the pedophile activity of the Kinsey Institute. In fact, the Australian had an article about Dr. Reisman while she was here. Pedophile's diary used in the Kinsey Report. Sexual Behavior in the Human Male, published in 1948, is in all our libraries here in Australia. It's what we use as a foundation for all of our sex education curriculums. Kinsey, and this is a table, uh, table 34 from the book, table 34. Now there's a search going on for these children. In fact, it's entitled The Children of Table 34. And there's a group in America that's trying to find out who these children are, who gave permission for this to occur, and what the results were. But the Kinsey Institute will not release the data. At Indiana University, where they're headquartered, they're saying it's uh, educational privilege or something like that. But anyway, here's what Dr. Reisman is letting people know around the world about the Kinsey Institute. Uh, Kinsey says a five-month-old can have three orgasms in an indeterminate period of time. Dr. Kinsey says a two-year-old can have 11 orgasms in 65 minutes. Dr. Kinsey says a four-year-old can have six orgasms in five minutes. Dr. Kinsey says an eight-year-old can have eight orgasms in two hours. And here's a 10-year-old can have 14 orgasms in 24 hours. Do you know Dr. Kinsey says he used technically trained men in oral and manual techniques on the children. Sexually torturing little children and calling it science. And we're basing our sex education material on that pedophile activity. It's the wrong thing to base it on. Well, that's who Dr. Reisman is. In fact, Hugh Hefner says in Playboy magazine, the best thing he could do is put a 357 Magnum to her head and say, Dr. Reisman, your history. She's a little Jewish lady about that tall. I had her here in Australia on all the talk shows, and they tried to link up in the U.S. with people to discredit her. They'd pull an expert out, and she'd knock them down. They'd pull another expert out, and she'd knock them down. Everybody, they'd come on against her, and they'd come against the wrong person because she knows the truth about what's happening. In fact, we'll talk more about her in a little while. Next slide, please. Dr. Claudio Violato. Now, the first time I communicated with him, he sent me this report a meta-analysis, but he sent it to me in Italian. So I had to email him and say, look, my Italian is just a little bit rusty. <laughs> Could I have it in English, please? <laughs> and I have, the, I have the report here. Now, this is published in Medicine, Mind, and Adolescence, a peer-reviewed scientific journal. He says, research in this area about the effects of pornography, research in this area can move beyond the question of whether pornography has an influence on violence. Hear that? That is now a given in the scientific community. We can now move beyond the fact that pornography causes violence. He goes on and says, the results are clear and consistent. That's a quote from this report. How could you be more concise than that? The results are clear and consistent. Exposure to pornographic material puts, one's, puts one at an increased risk for developing sexually deviant tendencies. You would do things that you wouldn't do otherwise. Committing sexual offenses, which you wouldn't do otherwise. And accepting the rape myth. You ever heard about the rape myth? All women want to be raped. That's the rape myth. That's what the pornographers portray in their material. In fact, I have a magazine here with me. All women want to be raped. This is a magazine that is sold just like this all over Australia. No cover restriction. We're not in a plastic bag. This has a photo essay in here, multi-pages of a motorcycle gang, gang raping a girl on a pool table. It's world famous. 
The look on the girl's face turns from shock and horror to delight and enjoyment. It's called the rape myth. All women enjoy being raped, according to pornography. Now, the government says they have adequately protected children from this magazine. You see the warning on the cover? Tell me if you think you're adequately protected. Do you see the warning on the cover? Here it is right here. See that? Warning. Material of an adult nature, this literature is not intended for minors and under no circumstance are they to view it, possess it, or place orders for merchandise offered herein. Do you consider that to be adequate protection? Just like the Gillard government doing away with the most vile internet pornography, having it accessible by children by shutting the filtering scheme, they consider this to be having children appropriately protected. I do not. I would like to see them protected better than they are now. This is a very good study. It's available online, and in the material I've given you, it has quotes from him. You can even contact him. Dr. Don Thompson, here is his report. He is a professional. Look at some of his credentials. Consultant to the Australian Law Reform Commission. The fellow of the Australian Psychology Society, a Victorian barrister. Chairman of Forensic Psychology at Monash University. In this report, Pornography or Not, he says, Pornography is causally related to sexually violent behavior. Everybody hear that? Pornography causes sexual violence. Don't let people tell you otherwise. He's one of the most credentialed men in Australia on this issue. Here is his report. It is also published in Australian Family Physician magazine in an editorial entitled Serial Killers and Sexual Violence. It's right here in a professional, medical, peer-reviewed publication. Pornography causes sexual violence. Detective Senior Constable Brad Hefter here in Queensland. I work with the Juvenile Aid Bureau here in Queensland. The former director, Nev Taylor, is a close friend who came to the seminar I just had at Aspley Presbyterian Church. I'm sorry, Annerley Presbyterian Church. Last week, he came to the seminar. He and I have worked together with the police to do things about curbing the impact pornography has. Well, Brad Hefner says pornography is the recurring factor. And in how many sexual investigations? Every sexual investigation, pornography has been an issue. Every sexual investigation. Uh, Chief Inspector David Jeffries. Now, you'll have the retailers and the pornographers tell you what they have is nonviolent pornography. That it's just soft porn. Well, look at this. Here's what the molesters use. Readily available, soft porn material to entice little children and break down their resistance. If we want our children more susceptible to the ravages of the molesters, go ahead and let the so-called soft porn material permeate your culture. Horrible case. Mr. Cruel, Inspector Sprague, set up the Spectrum Task Force the largest investigation of its kind in Australian history. They still haven't caught him, although there are some moves now saying they might know who he is. Thank the Lord. Mr. Cruel, Inspector Sprague says that we're staggered by the amount of pornography in the community. Staggered by the amount of pornography in the community, as I am. He says, I'm convinced and the experts will say I'm wrong, that there's a strong link between pornography and the amount of sex crimes we get. Well, there are some experts we need to listen to, and there are some we don't. Here's some experts that I say we don't need to listen to. Now, here's two Australians, Dr. Roger Summons, the Australian Geological Survey Organization, and Professor Malcolm Walter, uh, another twit from Macquarie University. Feces rain spawned humans. A massive rain of feces is the unsavory secret behind the dramatic appearance of advanced animal, mammals, including us. A controversial new theory in the world's leading science journal says. In other words, we all came from crap. Now I would suggest to you that these are two experts we don't need to listen to. Amen? Mm -hmm. There are some experts who say all kinds of things. The pornography uh, promoters and publishers and sellers say no one's influenced by what they see. I hope all of you realize that that's wrong. In fact, the senior lecturer in psychology at Macquarie University, Professor R. Power, says 
if visual imagery had no impact on human attitude or behavior in the Sydney Morning Herald, if visual imagery has no impact on human attitude or behavior, we would not have advertising campaigns. Victorian Crown Prosecutor, friend of mine, Victoria, who deals regularly with cases involving pornography and violent sex crimes, says there definitely is a very clear link between the two. How could you get more concise than that? Don't believe people who say, oh, it's okay, or oh, it's just soft porn. Northern Territory Supreme Court Justice Sir William Curtin, you think he's not seen some cases? I tell you what he has. He says people who think that there's no connection between pornography and the violent and bizarre crimes that come before the courts ought to do the case studies. Well, I've done the case studies. In fact, for the Queensland Crime Commission, I put together this report. Pornography, pedophile propaganda. This has case study after case study after case study after case study of pedophiles using pornography to entice and molest little children. And people who think there's no link between it ought to do the case study. We put this into the Queensland Crime Commission documenting how pedophiles do that and how we need to protect our children better than they are. The Attorney General, Philip Ruddock, under John Howard, I wrote to him about um, pornography and I was trying to get them to put some restraints and restrictions. And look what he says, that he's been advised that the link between pornography, watching sexually explicit material and crime is inconclusive. Well, I asked him, in fact, I've got the DVD back here at the marriage summit in Canberra. When I was addressing, he was sitting here. John Howard was here. Others, this is in Parliament in Canberra. I asked the Honorable Attorney General, who's advising him, Hugh Hefner? And then I set out documenting to him how all of the experts show watching sexually explicit material causes sexual violence. We need to have our legislators act responsibly. Amen? Don't touch that dial. One of the top books on this subject ever done. 24 top researchers and policymakers. Graphic violence and explicit sexual depictions are extremely harmful to children and adults. Now we're focusing on children, but the adults here need to, need to be worked on too. Sexual explicit material dramatically changes attitudes about normal sexuality, gender roles, marriage relationships, and effective child rearing. If viewed over time, it will affect behavior and may eventually lead to sexual deviance. Now, these are some of the top people in the world on this, and they say, unlike Philip Ruddick, that if viewed over time, it will affect behavior. Not it might, or it has an opportunity to, but it will. Here we have proof of what we call a media-censored link. I was asked by Jan Wade, when she was Jeff Kennett's Attorney General, to go before the parliament in Victoria, the Parliamentary Crime Prevention Committee, and document the link between pornography and sex crimes. We did it right here. I was shocked at some of the things we found. Australia leads the world in rape, in sexual assault, in youth suicide, all kinds of things. We're world leaders. I didn't know that until I studied this for Jan Wade. It's interesting that we're lobbying people all the time, and we show the men Playboy or People magazine, and they say, what's wrong with that? We show it to the women, and they don't say what's wrong with that. They say that's horrible. And so we've been drafting legislation, lobbying the women. Now, Jan Wade was so concerned about an 8% increase in rape in Victoria that she pulled together this Parliamentary Crime Prevention Committee, and we documented the link. Now, the media was there during these hearings. The media was there while we were there, but also the Eros Foundation from Canberra, the, the Sex Industry Workers Union. They were there, and they got some good media coverage while they were there. In fact, this was in The Age. There's no link between pornography and sexual assault. Published in The Age, quoting the Eros Foundation. Here is the Australian. There's no link between pornography and sexual assault. According to the Eros Foundation, published in The Australian, good coverage. They were on Channel 7, 9, and 10 News saying there's no link between pornography and sexual assault on the news. We get in the media. We get in the media, and here's the coverage we get. And this is wrong. We have a media-censored link between pornography and sexual violence. However, we were successful in Victoria and got what we wanted, 
through this submission because we spoke the truth into that picture and we achieved it. Now, the media's not for us. In fact, they're against us. Here, here look, an increase in Canberra of almost 200% in sex crimes. Yet nothing was set up to look into it. Sex crimes in Canberra tripled. That's what a 200% increase is. It tripled. And yet nothing was set up in eight. It only had an 8% increase in Victoria. Jan Wade was so concerned, she looked at why. Also, look at this. Incest in Canberra, up 20-fold, for goodness sake. Sexual assault nearly tripled. Cases of abduction with sexual intent all increased dramatically in the ACT. But nothing was looked at to see why. That's the headquarters of the X-rated video industry. And they're scared to death in Canberra of saying anything's wrong with it. Here we have, when I was in Canberra, another interesting example. There was a, a man arrested for molesting little boys. And the first article in the Canberra Times, look at the date, July 8, 2007. The man gave them beer and showed them pornographic movies, which is very common to get the little children to break down their resistance. So he did this. Next, next. Here, July 21, a few days later, he took him to his flat in Queenian to watch movies. Now, it's funny, they don't say that they're pornographic movies. They're just movies. They forgot that they were pornographic. Next slide. He gave them alcohol and bought them treats. All the same story about the same event, but they forgot to mention pornography. They mentioned pornography the first time. Now, the reporter probably submitted the same story and probably maybe even named the videos that he was showing the children, but the editors or the sub-editors somewhere up the line scratched out the pornography. They're scared to death to let anybody know there might be something wrong or it might be a link between pornography and sexual violence. This is very good. The New Scientist, May 5, 1990 issue, the cover story, The Power of Pornography, the cover story. A very prestigious scientific journal. It is a serious mistake to dismiss research on pornography as inconclusive. Now, remember, didn't Philip Ruddock said the link between sexually explicit material and crime was inconclusive? Well, what did they say? Who are you going to believe? The research scientist or some twit who happens to be attorney general? The Journal of Adolescent Health. I have here Dr. Kelly Layden Lingle. Mass media are an important context for adolescent sexual behavior. Uh, in fact, they found in here, Dr. Lingle found, this is a peer-reviewed scientific journal that was so groundbreaking. Next slide. That also her research started appearing in these other peer-reviewed scientific journals. In fact, look at the title of the U.S. Journal of Pediatrics, Clueless. Why do pediatricians underestimate the media's influence on children and adolescents? In fact, Dr. Lingle found that the most impactful experience young people have, the thing that, that, that influences them more than anything else, more than family, more than friends, more than church, more than school, is what? Pornography. Now, that is not a wowser document, although I am not ashamed to be called a wowser. You know, it stands for we only want social evils remedied. You know that, don't you? We only want social evils remedied. I would like to see some social evils remedied, so I guess that makes me a wowser. Well, in that context, I'm happy to be called. But these are peer-reviewed medical and scientific journals that talk about how pornography is causing our children to be harmed. Some irreparably. Some irreparably. Here's a magazine. People magazine. Now, I have it here. This is a, a grown woman naked on all fours with a dog collar and a leash. Now, that is called dehumanizing pornography. Dehumanizing pornography. Do you know... Dehumanizing pornography has been illegal in Canada since 1994. Did you know that? They cannot portray a woman as an animal, as a dog, as a thing in Canada. It's illegal. Here, it's just a woman. We don't care about our women. Rape is the least reported crime in Australia. Car theft is the most reported. What's that tell you? Don't mess with my car. Porn ruling is historic. This is the Calgary Herald. De in fact, they say a ruling on sex and pornography by the Supreme Court of Canada on Thursday will affect women's rights around the country, I'm sorry, across the country and around the globe. Violence against women is not a Canadian issue. It is an international issue. Dehumanizing pornography is illegal now since this ruling, the Canadian Supreme Court here in Australia 
it's just a woman. Imagine an Aboriginal man portrayed in such a position. Here we have Dr. Merlin Goldsmith, member of Parliament in New South Wales. This is the, the Quadrant magazine article, Pornography and Sexual Violence, where she's quoted, and, and also in the Australian Press Council News. We spend millions on affirmative action. We profess, at least publicly, horror at racism. And yet misogynistic visual images are to many sacrosanct. Women are being raped, beaten, murdered, but their right to life and liberty is considered less than the right to purchase or profit from pornography. Now she says if an Aboriginal man were portrayed in that position, that there would be outcry, and rightly so. But here in Australia, it's just a woman. So what? Here we have Drs. Lyne and Larson. Now this report right here contains most, if not all, of the peer-reviewed scientific journals of its type of audio and visual pornography up to the time that this was published. This is quoted in uh, all kinds of scientific literature. And they say that the impact, a systematic review of the effects of aggressive and non-aggressive. Isn't that interesting? They don't call it violent or non-violent. Do you know why? Scientists now consider all pornography to be violent in that it violates a woman's personal private space thrusted into the public arena, thereby placing all women at risk. So they call it aggressive or non-aggressive. All of it's violent. All of it's violent. Interesting what they came up with in here. They found pornography does have an important causal impact. It causes things to happen. None of them are good. Nonviolent pornography contributes to aggressive and callous attitudes and behaviors toward women. If we want our women treated callously and aggressively, then go ahead and let Penthouse Magazine permeate your community. The Canadian Fraser Commission on Pornography and Prostitution found commonly available nonviolent pornography had a substantially greater impact than violent pornography. When I was in Canberra launching this whole thing, taking this, video, taking this uh, PowerPoint presentation in the Legislative Assembly in Parliament, uh, I went on a couple of talkback radio shows in Canberra, and they wanted to degrade me. They wanted to come out and say, oh, well, you know, all the porn we have here in Canberra is nonviolent. And so I was able to point out a few things like this, and they cut me off. Oh, thank you so much for coming on. When I was pointing out the truth about nonviolent pornography, don't let people lie to you. U.S. Department of Justice, connections between pornography and violent sex-related crimes, including rape of women and molestation of children, have been proved by scientific research and hard data. They are no longer supposition. How can you get more clear than that? Pornified. I just got that book on uh, uh, Amazon.com. Pornified. In this controversial and critically acclaimed book, Pamela Paul argues that pornography is destroying our marriages and families and distorting our children's ideas of sex and sexuality. True feminists stand with us and abhor the porno industry. Dr. Diane Russell, look at that website there on top. Dr. Russell, she is excellent. She tells me, Jack, I am not a uh, feminist. I'm a radical feminist. <laughs> She's a professor at the University of Southern California at Berkeley. Uh, her website you need to go to. In fact, she has 101 things you can do about pornography. She even has about a dozen things that if you have children that are excellent, excellent, excellent. There are some people who are credentialed and are very concerned about what's going on. These two are a couple of them. Pamela Paul, Dr. Diana Russell. Next slide, please. We don't know how bad it's gotten. This is Australian penthouse. A copy of this is in the pamphlet that Leanne prepared for you, that's stapled together that you can take with you. The Schoolgirl. This is a three-page manual on how to abduct and molest Australian schoolgirls. Tells you how to get a job as a gardener, masquerade as a gardener at private girls' schools. How to dress to attract little girls to you. How to outfit a motel room, see it, like a photography studio and entice little girls into it. Look at the guy on top of the cage that he's enticing a little girl in. Penthouse's defense for a child molester's manual, is that it's funny. Does anyone think molesting school... You know, I haven't found anybody that thinks it's funny. I haven't found anybody. Pennell says it's funny. Uh, now look at the, the, the quote here. Get a job as a... There's got to be an easier way to access schoolgirls. 
They say get a job as a school gardener. Look at this. Here's what happens when we publish this kind of thing. Then we start having what the police call copycat crimes. See this? This is, in the latest attack, the man posing as a school gardener lured two nine-year-old girls to a secluded section of the schoolyard. Look at the one over there, the fourth schoolgirl attack in a month. The latest attack, the man posing as a school gardener, again, two nine-year-old girls. Next one. Look at all of these. Child molester strikes again. Sydney Morning Herald, posing as a gardener. Thank you, Penthouse. Next one. Look at this. Man jailed for raping schoolgirls. Schoolgirl assaulted in the park. Girl nine molested at school. Posing as a builder. Posing as a gardener. Copycat crimes. Images of children, crime, and violence in Playboy, Penthouse, and Hustler magazines. This is a report done by the U.S. Department of Justice by Dr. Judith Reisman. Remember we talked about her a little while ago? Here's the report right here. Images of children, crime, and violence in Playboy, Penthouse, and Hustler magazines. Do you know I've had people tell me that there's no children in Playboy? My response to that is, how would you know? <laughs> Very good, young lady. Very good. In fact, Penthouse Magazine had six pages about me in their Christmas issue just a while back. I hope that is news to all of you here. Six pages about me telling their readers how we weren't doing anything. But look at this. This is the Office of Juvenile Justice and Delinquency Prevention, the U.S. Department of Justice. Here's what they found. You'll be shocked at this. 6,000 images, over 6,000 photographs, illustrations, and cartoons depicting children in Playboy, Penthouse, and Hustler. Over 1,600 child images involving nudity. Over 1,200 child images involving genital activity. Almost 1,000 child images involving children in sex with adults. Almost 600 child images involving force, violent sexual activity. Almost 300 child images involving sex with animals or adults. I'm sorry, or objects. 51% of the cartoons, over half of them, and almost half the photographs involve children aged 3 to 11. Interspersed with the child images were 15,000 images of crime and violence. That's what we have in the pages of the so-called soft porn material we've allowed to permeate our culture. So much so here in Australia. This is from the Australian. Sex abuse is a part of our culture. And that's what they're telling the Aboriginal boys. Remember we talked about them a little while ago? Two and three and four-year-old boys. They're setting up screens in Alice Springs and other areas, and they're using the videos they get out of Canberra, and they show them the little boys, and they then talk them into behaving Likewise. In fact, this guy who's writing a doctorate, his doctoral thesis, he says, we have a major problem with child sexual abuse in indigenous communities. The top quote there, everybody knows it's happening. Everybody knows it's happening up there. Everybody knows. And that's why John Howard called for the intervention. That's why he called for it. And thankfully, uh, when I was in Canberra at that marriage summit that I bucketed Philip Ruddick over, I also bucketed uh, what the government came up with, because here's the Northern Territory Emergency Response. Here it is, straight from the Attorney General's website. They set up a task force, a couple of years on this. Multi-million dollars were spent. And here's what they come up with. Here's a map of the Northern Territory. The shaded-in areas, you can't have pornography. The light areas, you can. Does that make sense to anybody here? Anybody? That's what they come up with. Now, what I had with me was a larger version of this. And on the back, I had a map of the Northern Territory that a three-year-old had taken a crayon and colored in. And I held it up at this meeting. John Howard, Philip Ruddock, others were there. And I held it up and said, this is more accurate than the government's response. And it didn't take millions of dollars. It didn't take two years. It took a three-year-old, three crayons, and one tantrum. And not only is it more accurate than the government's map, it's certainly more colorful. They come up with things like that, and we expect them to act in our best interest. Do you see how things are going on? This is a boy uh, who was bound and raped, look at this, 37 times. The poor little kid. The, the judge says it's the worst case he's ever seen. 
forced to watch a pornographic DVD, tied up with his bootlaces. Now there's a, 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 a man in America that was put to death recently by the name of Ted Bundy. Some of you may have heard of Ted Bundy, serial sex killer. He was guilty of about 30 young girls. Now he ended up uh, abducting, molesting, raping, dismembering 12-year-old girls. How did he get there? He got there. Very good. Let's go, let's skip. Here's Ted Bundy talking to Dr. James Dobson. This is a message I want to get across. But as a young, a young boy, and I mean the boy of uh, 12 or 13, certainly, uh, that I encountered outside the home again uh, in uh, the local grocery store, the local uh, uh, drug store, the softcore pornography, what people call softcore. Uh, but as I think I, I explained to you last night, Dr. Dobson, in an anecdote, uh, that as young boys do, we explored the, the back roads and sideways and byways of our neighborhood, and oftentimes people would dump the garbage and whatever they were cleaning out of their house, and from time to time we'd come across so, pornographic books of a harder nature than uh, more uh, graphic, you might say, more explicit nature than we would encounter, let's say, in your local grocery store. And, and, and the issue is how this kind of literature contributed and helped mold and, and shape the kinds of violent behavior. It fueled your fantasies, didn't it? Well, in, in the beginning it fuels this kind of thought process. Then, it, at a certain time, it's instrumental in what I would say crystallizing it, make it in, making it into something which is almost an, like a separate entity inside. And that in, at that point, you're at the verge, or I was at the verge of acting out on this on this kind of these kinds of things. Now, I really want to understand that you had gone about as far as you could go in your own fantasy life mm -hmm. with printed material, and you made or printed and video or film Fol or film photos, magazines yeah. what have you yeah. and and then there was the urge to take that little step or big step over to a physical right. uh, event and it happens it, it happened in stages gradually it doesn't necessarily not to me at least happen overnight once you become addicted to it and I look at this as a kind of addiction uh, like other kinds of addiction of addiction you keep I would keep looking for more potent, more explicit, more it's graphic aggressive. kinds of material. Like an addiction, you keep craving something which is harder, harder, something which, which gives you a greater uh, sense of, uh, of uh, excitement. Until you reach the point where the pornography only goes so far, you reach the, that jumping off point where you begin to wonder if, if maybe actually doing it will give you that which is beyond just reading about it or looking at it. I've seen that stuff and it doesn't do anything to me. And I can understand that. I don't, virtually everyone uh, can be exposed to so-called pornography and while they're aroused to it to one degree or another and not go out and do anything wrong. Well, the addictions are like that. They affect some yeah. people more than they affect others. Well, but there is a percentage of people affected by hardcore pornography in a very violent way and you're obviously one of them. That was a major component, and I don't know why I was vulnerable to it. All I know is that, uh, that, it, uh, that it had an, an impact on me uh, that was just so uh, central to the development of the violent behavior that I engaged in. And pornography can reach out and snatch a kid out of any house today. He, he snatched me out of my home, it snatched me out of my home 20, 30 years mm -hmm. ago. And as diligent as my parents were, uh, and they were diligent in protecting their children, and as good a Christian home as we had, and we had a wonderful Christian home, uh, there is no protection against the kind that the kinds of influences that are loose in the society that, that, that tolerates. You, you feel this really deeply, don't you? Ted, outside these walls right now, there are several hundred reporters that wanted to talk to you. Yeah. And you asked me to come here from California because you had something you wanted to say. 
this hour that we have together uh, is not just an interview with a man who's scheduled to die tomorrow morning. I am here and you're here because of this message that you're talking about right here. You really feel that hardcore pornography and the doorway to it, softcore pornography, is doing untold damage to other people and causing other women to be abused and killed the way you did others. Listen, I'm no social scientist and I haven't done a survey. I mean, I, I don't pretend that I know what John Q. Citizen thinks about this. <clears throat> but I've lived in prison for a long time now. And I've met a lot of men who were motivated to commit violence just like me. And without exception, every one of them was deeply involved in pornography without question, without exception, deeply influenced and consumed by an addiction to pornography. There's no question about it. The FBI's own study on serial homicide shows that the most common interest among serial killers is pornography. Yeah, that's true. And it's, and it's real, it's true. On the one hand, well-meaning, decent people will condemn behavior of a Ted Bundy while they're walking past a, a, a magazine rack full of the very kinds of things that send young kids down the road to be Ted Bundys. That's the irony. Eleven hours before they put him in the electric chair, he sits in the Florida State Penitentiary, in the cafeteria, in handcuffs, and tells Dr. James Dobson the role pornography played in his life. Now, how did he end up molesting, dismembering, raping? He got there by walking through the doorway marked pornography. We are sending our children down a hall today. Down that hallway, there are many doors. The doorways are marked illegal drugs, prostitution, alcohol, gambling, witchcraft in the occult, pornography. Now, most of those doors are locked for children. The door marked pornography is standing wide open. And our children are pouring through it. But not only is the doorway standing wide open, the hallway we're sending them down is wallpapered with pornography. The Bailey Report, write down the Bailey Report. It was just published last week by the Education Department in Great Britain. The Bailey, B-A-I-L-E-Y, the Bailey Report. It's not on here because it was just done. Well, they, talk, they came up with that term about their children. And this is, again, this is a government report. This is the education department in the UK. And they say that children, that children's environment is wallpapered with pornography. To them, it's no big deal to have sexual intercourse at 11, at 8, at 9, to rape little girls. No big deal. This is from Australian Family Physician Magazine, that one that I held up. Their medical editor, Professor Murtaugh. Uh, Dr. Yeah, Professor John Murtaugh says, we have a major problem. This is Australia. We have a major problem. Our society, it seems, cannot come to terms with the widespread concern about the proliferation of permissive sex and violence and the warnings from the experts. Those who argue for caution and restraint, that's me, are on the right track. We are fighting a winnable war. Now, what we're doing is right. We need to keep to Galatians 6, 9. Let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we shall reap if we faint not. That's what God promised. That's a promise in Scripture. When we write letters, we've been writing to the advertisers in Playboy and Penthouse, and we've been so successful that we've bankrupted Playboy magazine. It no longer exists in Australia. No longer exists. We made them uneconomic by writing to the advertisers, by writing to the retailers that sold them, by having women go into shops and tell the managers they're not going to spend their money there. I'll give you a couple of stories. Up in Nambour, when I came through there, when Playboy had just gotten into the cold... Next one. We can get off there. There we go. Real men don't use porn. I've got one of those bumper stickers here. That's the one they have in the Ipswich paper. Me holding this up in front of them like this. Uh, I have ladies come up to me after my meetings all the time and tell me what a shame it is that all the real men in Australia are women. Uh, <laughs> we have a problem here. We have to do something about it. So I was up on the Sunshine Coast. And when I left up there, seven of the churches got together. I was talking about porn. I do this in churches all over Australia. And I tell good stories, exciting stories. And the, the churches up there got together. Seven of them got together. Now, most of you know that's a miracle in and of itself. 
they got together and decided to take some action. Faith without works is dead. Put some action to our faith, we see good things happen. Seven of the churches got together, sent a lady into Cole's New World, late night shopping, Thursday evening, crowded, jam-packed in the store. Each of the ladies got two grocery carts full of groceries, frozen food, ice cream, milk, bread, meat, canned goods. Some of you have a devious mind, I can see right now. And the ladies went up to the checkout aisle. The first one checks out the first trolley full of groceries, pulls the second one up, checks that all of it to the bottom few items. The receipt has gotten longer and longer and longer. The bags of groceries are growing. And, and she reaches around and pulls out Playboy magazine and says, wait a minute, I can't spend my money at a shop that sells this magazine, slapped it on the counter and walked out. Do you know people in the store were applauding the ladies for doing that? And they're saying, well, I'm not going to spend my money either here and walking out. And by the time the fourth lady got to the checkout aisle, the manager went around and pulled out all the Playboy magazines, took them off the racks. Because people put some action to their faith. I was down in, in Tasmania right after that. And Kmart, part of the Meyer Empire, was selling Playboy magazine. And I went up to the manager and to object, and he went over to show me how responsible he was being by having Playboy magazine in a clear plastic wrapper. And he picks it up to show me, and it fell out. <laughs> and, and, and he said, well, look, I can't take it out. I said, well, no, but l let me talk to somebody who can. So go to their service desk and use their phone. So I got on their, their phone, and I called their headquarters. He did all the, and I, I spoke to Mrs. Hillary Jones, the senior manager for customer liaison for the Coles Meyer Empire. And, and I said, Mrs. Jones, this is Jack Sonneman. She said, Jack Sonneman, we've had trouble with you before, hadn't we? She said. <laughs> I said, listen, I don't want to let you know that I'm leaving your store and spending my money elsewhere because I do not like to confront my family with pornographic imagery. Would you please take the magazine Playboy out of your store? She said, Mr. Sonneman. Now, these guys call me Mr. Sonneman on the phone. I don't know what they call me when they hang up. She said, Mr. Sonneman, the decision to stop Playboy magazine is a nationwide decision that cannot be changed. I said, Mrs. Jones, I'm sorry, you're mistaken. God's word is the only thing that cannot be changed. Everything else is subject to revision. <laughs> she said, well, we're not going to take it out. I said, well, I'm not going to shop at your store. Three weeks later, they took it out all over the nation of Australia because people like you did the same thing. Do you understand how this is a winnable war? We can have fun doing this stuff. We wrote to Sony about their advertising in Playboy and Penthouse magazines. And got a letter back from Mr. Robert Hayes, one of the national managers, Australian. Pretty typical response. He said, as a father of five children, in relation to your comment on the magazine Penthouse being pornographic, I personally disagree. He said, as the magazine offends you, stop reading it. The matter is concluded. Well, I took that quote from Mr. Robert Hayes from Sony and put it in our newsletter, along with his name, address, telephone number, and fax number. I don't know how many people contacted Sony after that. I never heard from Mr. Robert Hayes again. I was contacted by Mr. Tadashi Ishida at Sony, and he said, Mr. Sonman, I cringe when they do that, but he said, Mr. Sonman, we have ceased all association with Playboy, Penthouse, or similar magazines. Would you please call your readers off? <laughs> When we speak into the picture as Jesus would have us speak, we see the results Jesus would have us see. And there's no bad in that. Amen? It's exciting to take part in a winnable war. We wrote to Bob Jane T. Marks about his advertising in Penthouse. Bob Jane wrote back to me himself. I've got the letter. He says his staff had reviewed the standards of Penthouse magazine. Something I assume they do monthly. <laughs> But he said the standards had fallen so low he could no longer support them. He took his ad out. That's all we wanted. Now, he didn't take his ad out because standards of penthouse had dropped so low. He took his ad out because we wrote him and said, we're going to buy our tires at bow repairs. Do you understand? They don't care about our morality. They care about our money. Our daughters aren't important to them. Our dollars are. It's a smut for profit business. Bob Anson, we wrote to him when he was running budget rent a car. And he wrote back, listen to this. He said, not being a reader, this is Playboy magazine, not being a reader of the magazine, Mr. Sonneman, as I presume you are, he says, I am not personally aware of its content. He said, if the magazine offends you, stop reading it. This is uh, Bob Anson. So in the next issue of our newsletter, we had a headline. 
Bob Ansett does not know Playboy magazine features naked women. And we had that quote from Mr. Ansett along with his name, his address, his telephone number, and his fax number. And I don't know how many people wrote to him, but his ad disappeared from Playboy magazine. It had not reappeared. And one of my readers wrote to me and congratulated me for getting a two-paragraph mention in Bob Ansett's autobiography. I had to go out and buy a stupid book. <laughs> and sure enough, two paragraphs about me in his autobiography. Now, it wasn't a very good two paragraphs, but we had to really impact him. In order for that to happen, we can have fun doing this. <laughs> we don't have to beat him with a Bible. We can have fun doing it, but we've got to get involved. We've got to do it. We've had all kinds of things happen. In fact, we put penthouses many, a, a long time ago. We put penthouses dial a porn number in our newsletter and said if it concerned people to write to at the time, uh, Gareth, Gareth Evans was the attorney general, well, minister for communications under Hawkey. And Gareth, Gareth Evans uh, was the man responsible for all the communications. And we wrote about penthouses dial a porn number. We got a letter back from, from telecom. And the letter said, listen to this. Due to the massive number of complaints received about the message content of this service, the minister has instructed us to disconnect it. It wasn't a fight, it wasn't a battle. The minister said, wait a minute, I'm getting too many letters here. I don't know what to do, so we'll just unplug the number. That's what they did. So my wife said, well, Jack, since we got one canceled, let's get them all canceled. I said, Margaret, steady on, steady on. She said, look, if we can get one, let's get them all. She's a pretty smart gal, that wife of mine. Look who she married. <laughs> What's funny about that? <laughs> so, so we came up with the idea of, of, in fact, we came up with the idea because Bishop Maine in Canberra said that Senator Richard Alston is uh, a member of his church and he'll be very keen as Howard's uh, Minister for Communications to do something about this. And we took him several um, dial porn number stories about children running up uh, multi uh, hundred dollar phone bills, ringing these numbers. And teachers were confiscating the numbers at school, all kinds of things. And so we said, instead of having that number available on every phone, why don't we have people opt into the service if they want to get it? You know, you have to apply for the service. So we're not, we weren't saying banning them or burn them or stop them or censor them. Just let's put it back. Instead of letting every child pick up any phone and dial a pornographic service, let's get people who have that phone apply for the service. That was passed as federal legislation. And the um, number of people who applied, any guesses how many people applied for that service to come on their phone? Nationwide, you know how many people applied? Eleven. 11. So there are no more. There are no more. There's no longer an Australian based dial a porn server, not one, because we made it uneconomic. Now, we have to take steps right now to do something. In fact, when we came here, they were using 15, 16, and 17 year olds in Playboy and Penthouse magazines. In fact, this little girl here. Here's a magazine where the news agent in the corner shop tells you, I've got a magazine here, a little girl, 15 years old with no clothes on. See that nude at 15? Advertising it. Now, did any of you do anything? Well, I did. They can't do this anymore. We launched a campaign across Australia. You probably would have taken part in it because this was a while back. This young lady here has been, on our, been on, with us for a long time. But we launched a campaign. We demanded they raise the age to 21. We would take nothing less, knowing full well we weren't going to get 21. We got 18. We forced national legislation to protect 15, 16, and 17-year-olds. They can no longer use that age group. Not only that, but we also banned pseudo-child imagery in Australian porn. You know what that is? They would dress up grown women as schoolgirls in Australian porn magazines and portray them as sexually interacting with motorcycle gangs and being sexually accessible and available, so much so that people would look at little schoolgirls as being ready for that type of activity and behavior. We banned that. They can no longer portray our schoolgirls in that way. They have to appear at least 18 in the magazine. Not only did we ban that, we also banned child magnets. The pornographers were so nefarious that they would actually put uh, characters unique to the childhood entertainment world. Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck in the magazines. Now, you don't use Donald Duck or Mickey Mouse or uh, characters like that to attract adults. You use that to attract children. That's why they're known in the trade as child magnets. Well, they can no longer do that in Australia. They can no longer do that. 
because we decided to take Jesus into the picture. The picture changed. Now, we can all do it, and it'll all just happen sooner if you folks get involved with us in a winnable war. We would like you to write to the premier of this state and ask her to please stop displaying pornography to children every time you go shopping. Is that easy to do? We're not telling her to ban anything or burn anything, but I'm going to show you why we must get this off display. We have a big problem today recognized as the sexualization of childhood, children being sexualized. We don't have a hope of protecting them as long as we continue to display pornography to them as if it's normal. Now, everybody in here are adults, so I'm going to show this cover of this magazine. Uh, but before I show it to you, I'm going to warn you that you're going to be lied to and manipulated. It's not a real photo. It's a doctored photograph. So I'm going to manipulate your thinking with a doctored photograph and show you what's displayed prominently and publicly. Everybody see that? This is displayed prominently and publicly to your children. Now, now that all of you are adults and, and you know that your thinking was manipulated. Remember, I warned you ahead of time that this was a doctored photo. It's not real. You're being lied to. And most of you in here are adults, most of you. Uh, I would like for you to now take that image out of your mind and forget you ever saw it. Anybody done it? Take that image out of your mind and forget you ever saw it. You can't do it. You know why? Because God made you that way. We need to stop impacting the minds of our little children with pornographic imagery. If we care about them. Now, maybe we don't care. The OECD says we lead the world. In youth suicide, our children kill themselves more than anywhere in the world. We lead the world in the latest figures. We lead the developed world, OECD, in sexual assault and violent assault, both. We are world leaders in some things that aren't too good. But we have to get to the material. Once it comes off display, we start seeing good things happen. In fact, in Hawaii, and the reporter that came with the Ipswich paper was raised in Hawaii, and we were talking about this to her, and she said, yeah, I was raised in Hawaii, and you're right. They took it off display. And when they did, rapes fell. They put it back on display because of lobbying from the porno industry that nobody's influenced by what they see. Rape started back up again. In fact, and then they pulled it off and it's not displayed in Hawaii anyway. In fact, it's not displayed in America anywhere. You can live your entire life in New York or Los Angeles or Chicago or Memphis and never see a pornographic cover of a magazine ever. They have them, but they're behind what's called a blinder rack. I'll show you how that works really briefly and quickly. They have to slip them behind a blinder rack. Is that not a good idea? When you go shopping, that we think this material should be behind a cover, that should not be, not be displayed to children, not accessible to children, not sold to children. This magazine is sold to children, legally. This has pornography, this has advertisements for X-rated videos, for sex services, for all kinds of things. And it's sold freely and openly to children. That's because we have the Office of Film and Literature Classification, the national body, they've been looking at smut too long. And they wouldn't know a pornographic image if it slapped them in the face. They approve of this, and a penthouse being sold to children, and Hustler. Uh, we think that those magazines should be put in an adult-only category, pull them off display, not let children look through them in the shops, and not sell them to children. We think there should be a height restriction. Now, in Tasmania, we got the law passed. They, the, the cover, they have to be like this. You can't display them. And if the magazine contains matters of sex or nudity, the cover has to be displayed. If it contains editorial or pictorial content of a sexual nature, if it's advertisements of products and services of a sexual nature, the cover has to be restricted. Is that a good idea? Tasmania, that's law. Also, it can't be sold to children. The Attorney General in each state can come in and overrule the inadequate national guidelines and can put these restrictions on it. We want the Attorney General here to do that. You think that's good? Um, now, they beat us. Don't think your government officials are really waiting and looking to help you. They beat us on the height restriction in Tasmania. We got everything but the height restriction. The leader for the government in the upper house, when they're getting this pass, got up on his chair and reached over his head to illustrate to his colleagues how it would discriminate. A one and a half meter height restriction that on Penthouse Magazine would discriminate against Tasmanian dwarfs. I was in the gallery about three in the morning when this was being debated, and I yelled down, both of them? <laughs> I said, what about rice? What about beans? What about milk? Uh, the police came up and took me out, and I'm still yelling at the idiots. You know, there's all kinds of, how, much, how many things can you think? Cereal? How many things can you think of this? Uh, and, and, you know, everything but penthouse is okay. So we have to get involved in this if we want to see good things happen. 
But we are seeing good things happen. 100% of the advertisers we've listed in our newsletter, we've had TV shows canceled, we've had, uh, like I say, the Dalapore numbers, we've had the age raise in the magazines, we've run Playboy magazine out of Australia. Um, all kind of good things have happened because folks like you have joined your voice with us and written a little letter. And it's also good when you see a little victory like a, a poster taken down in a local shop. It may seem insignificant to you, but when I put it in my newsletter and people read about it in Perth or in Canberra or in Townsville or in Melbourne and they, they, they do the same thing, then it becomes nationally significant and it's all good. So if you can, I would like you to get your name on the list over here before you go. Now we ask our readers for a voluntary subscription fee. Everything I do costs money. We ask them for a voluntary subscription fee of $10 a year. Ten stinking dollars a year. Give me a break. And you don't have to give $10. You can give 20 <laughs> Why is that funny also? But a list over there. Take this stuff with you and put your name down. There's just a sheet of paper to sign. And you can see that I've had quite a few people sign up since we've been here. And if you can help us, help us. It's, a, it's You know, that's all. We're just looking for those. God, I'm going to continue. God's going to provide for me. We have a, a faith ministry, which means I go to the post office box every day. If there's some money there, I pay some bills. If there isn't any money there, I don't answer the telephone. Try contacting me sometime, and you'll see whether we've got any money coming in. <laughs> so I want to get your involvement. I want to know that we can show our children a future filled with hope instead of the increasingly deadly perversions of the pornographers. We can do it if we will. Amen? Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thanks so much.